Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to just show you some general features and how to use the iPogo spoofing app, which allows you to play Pokemon Go, um, going places around the world from the comfort of your home or wherever you happen to be. Um, so as you can see right now, I have um, Pokemon Go open. It's actually the iPogo version of it, um, which adds a couple bars. So I have this here, which I can move around. That's a nearby bar. And then this is the actual iPogo menu um, right there. Uh, at the moment, I'm not spoofing. I'm just by my house. You can see I have pretty much nothing anywhere near me. Uh, there's some a couple stops at the park a few blocks away. If I wanted to get in my car and go there, I could or walk. It would take me about 40 minutes. Um, but I can go here and click on the menu, go down to settings, scroll down to spoofing on off, turn that on, and now I'm gonna be where I'm spoofing, which is Santa Cruz, Spain. And boy, that looks a little better, doesn't it? A little, little bit more stuff to do here in Spain than uh, near my house. So um, that's as simple as it is uh, to start spoofing once you have the app installed. Now I've got a separate video on how to install iPogo, how to get it working on your phone. Uh, specifically for an iPhone, although they do have support for Android now. So you can check out their website on how to do that. I'll leave links in the um, description on how to do that, as well as to the video that I made on how to install and get it working. Um, so let's get started and go over some of the key features here of iPogo, and then we'll go from there. All right, so first of all, how do you get around with iPogo? That's probably an important feature to know. Um, First of all, uh, if you have your nearby bar turned on, you can jump right to the Pokemon you see here and you can kind of scroll through them and it'll bring you right to them or walk you to them depending on which setting you have set. So when you first jump to it, you might not see the Pokemon it mentioned, but if you just walk away and then walk back to it, it'll show up, there he is. Okay, so I can jump right to it. I wanna to jump to that Magikarp, I jump there, walk away a little bit. Walk back to where it was, and I should he should appear. That's generally how this works. So let's say you jump around and you get to it using that. How do you move? So if we go into the menu, settings. One always with the joystick. You could change the joystick to be static which gives you this little thing here. You can walk around with that. Just kind of drag it where you want to go. Some people like that. I don't. So if we go back to settings and we turn off the, the joystick one we want to turn on instead is tap to walk. So by default, it's off, but I turn that on and that gives you the ability to just kind of click where you want to go. And he starts walking. Much easier in my opinion, just kind of click where you want to go instead of dealing with a joystick. And while it's walking, as long as your speed is within normal, you can spin and catch etc. while he's walking. Things will get out of range as you walk away from them, so keep that in mind, but you can just start spinning. Okay, so let's go down through the list of options. Uh, activate, if you go to the iPogo website and you subscribe, uh, I think it's like five bucks a month, you get some extra features. Um, if you went and got an activation code, this is where you would enter that in. Uh, to activate. I've never done that. I, I don't see the need. Most of the features I want are here already. Um, map brings you up a map of the, clo the area that you're currently spoofed to or your local area and you can see what Pokemon are around you on it. You can see everything of where you are. You can jump from here right directly. Like if I wanted to jump to that gym I can select it or that ducklet. Whatever I can select it if I can get it. There's so many things on this one. And it keeps wanting to select other than what I'm actually selecting. <laughs> oh, I love that ducklet. 
There we go, gym. And I could teleport right to it or I could walk to it. And voila, I'm at that gym. It's that simple. So I can jump via the, the map. I could start doing raids right from there. If I'm in front of it, I wouldn't have to do a, a raid pass. I mean, a remote raid pass. Um, if your menus disappear, you should be able to double click with two fingers, just two long presses, and it brings back up your menus if they disappear. Sometimes that happens. That's this hide UIs thing. I don't normally like that uh, turned on. Uh, <clears throat> I usually just leave the menu there and just kind of collapse it like that. All right. Um, Let's move on uh, to some other features here. Um, we'll go under settings here. So we talked about the map, uh, what you can do with it. You could zoom out, right, and see where you're actually at. And it'll take a while to draw and show other areas with the actual gyms and Pokestops. It, just because you don't see them doesn't mean they're not there. You'd have to go there in order for it to draw that area but you can also search like if i was looking for a specific thing i could type grand canyon and it would find the grand canyon for me and i could jump right there uh, that way as well which is pretty cool all right some other things you can do here feeds feeds are awesome um, it has some pre-built feeds for a perfect four score of 100 a four score of 90 and up 82 and up or zeros if you like uh, nundos um, if you're just looking for um, perfects but you don't care what level they're at you do this one here and it searches around the world for all the perfects available so this is a level 11 uh hit them on top 100 percent right etc um obviously a level four is going to take a ton of candy to level that puppy up uh level 35 is the highest you can get in the wild uh, and then you would pay candy and uh, excel candy to get it to level 50. Um, after your, you have to reach level 40 or above in order to go um, higher than level 40, but um, level 50 with XL candy, um, which you can do from level 40 to 50 uh, of yourself. Um, so you can kind of scroll through here and if you wanted to jump, uh, you could right from here. Now, a couple things to point out is cooldowns. If you're not familiar with that term, uh, this CD is cooldown. It's telling you that if you jump here to this hit on top, um, you're gonna have to wait 116 minutes before you can really do anything. Uh, what I mean by anything is you can't catch anything, you can't spin polka stops, you can't do raids, um, anything like that. If you try to do it, it will fail. What will happen uh, if you try to spin a polka stop is nothing comes out of it. It just kind of spins, but no, you don't get any stuff. If you try to catch a Pokemon, he'll flee. If you try to uh, go into a raid, uh, it'll keep kicking you out of the raid. Uh, that's what's called a soft ban. Um, a hard ban was, would be as if you're actually banned from the game, which I haven't seen happen. Um, they used to do it way back when for, for spoofers, um, but I haven't heard too much about people being spoofed these days. So uh, as long as you obey the cooldowns, there's no reason you should ever get um, uh, kicked out anyway or banned, uh, hard banned. Um, but uh, if I really wanted this though, if that's like something I've really been wanting, I could jump there. I can go, I'm gonna to get to this Servine. I'm gonna teleport right there. It tells me it's gonna be a 115 minute wait down, a cool down. I'm there now. If I move around a little bit, he should pop up. But I'm not gonna be able to catch him right away as I know, because I have that cool down clock at the top here. And I can move that. Notice it warned me that there was a Shendo Servine waiting there for me. And there he is, he's level 2200. 15, 15, 15 are his stats, which is really great. But if I try to catch him right now, he will flee, and I'll show you that. Fled. Tells me right away he's gonna flee. I don't have to wait for him to pop out to know he's gonna flee. Um, that's one of the features as well, as it tells you. He left because I did not wait for the cooldown. Now the cooldown seems to have gone away just because it assumed that I've met my cooldown, but I haven't. If I keep trying to catch things, even after this 41 second clock goes away, um, I'm going to keep having them flee. Because it's still, the game knows the last place I was a minute ago was Santa Cruz, Spain. Um, so uh, if I wanted to catch one of these, I could, but what I would have to do is keep it at this screen. So I sit here at the catch screen and just sit here and wait for my 
118 minutes to go away. Not this countdown, which is fake now. That happened because I tried catching any flu. Um, but uh, the actual, what it was when I first got here, which was 117 minutes. If I try to go back to Santa Cruz by going back to my favorites, that happens to be a hot, spo hot spot. So if I go back to Santa Cruz, Spain, it's gonna think I have 119 minutes, but the game thinks that's where I was. So I know that I could start playing here right away because it knows I'm in Santa Cruz, Oops. in theory. There it goes. So I can do stuff in Santa Cruz still because that's really where it knows I was. Um, and now uh, my countdown reset again. It, it gives you a little countdown between everything you do, but the ones in between actions aren't, aren't, aren't important, but the ones between jumps definitely are. Um, so again, if I jump to somewhere where there's a cooldown, I could go into the Pokemon and just leave it on that catch screen until my countdown goes away, and then I should be able to catch them just fine. Um, because if I look at... If I look at the things that are available here, it might say he's only going to be there for another nine minutes, but I have a 120 minute cooldown. So if I really want him, I could jump there, bring him up, get him in the catch screen and just leave it there for the 120 minutes. Even though he would have despawned in nine minutes, he won't despawn as long as you've got him in the catch screen. So if you leave him at that catch screen, you can just sit there, keep your phone awake, don't turn it off, don't close out, and, and he will be catchable in 120 minutes. Uh, so that's the key. Um, 120 minutes is the max cooldown for anything, so you can jump anywhere in the world if you've waited two hours. Um, if you haven't played the game in two hours, when you first open it, you can jump anywhere in the world and start playing immediately. Um, otherwise, you have to stay within your um, areas or, or wait the cooldown periods. Um, so I can do whatever I want in Spain here. I can start raiding. I can catch. I can do battles. I can do whatever I want to. I don't need to waste any remote raid passes. Um, if I have raid ray passes I want to use up, and, but I want to do it at this gym, I can just go to this gym and, you know, I don't have any regular raid passes, but I do have remote raid passes. I would just go just a little bit away from it. I'd walk like over here, right? Just walk far enough away from it so that it's too far to use a regular raid pass, right? And then click on it. And then it's going to offer me the option. Oh, I'm still too close. There we go, that should be far enough away. Now, now if I go into it, I would have to use a remote raid pass. Look at that. So if I wanna raid with a remote raid pass, I could, even though I'm right next to it. Um, so depending what passes you have available, you can use either one uh, using this method, which is pretty sweet. Let's look at some other features. All right, um, also under feeds. Um, so again, you can do uh, four scores of 100, uh, 90 and up, 82 and up, or zeros, if you happen to like nundos. Um, also, you can do custom, which is really awesome. So custom allows you to make a search for specifically what you're looking for. So this one I've made is show me any Pokemon that's level 35, which is the max you can find in the wild, and a perfect 100. Uh, four score. So uh, right now there's four of those around the world available. Those are the four I can I can search from um, and jump right to. I, I, mind you, they all have high cooldowns, um, so I would either have to wait the two hours or um, come back in two hours and look for more stuff or come back later and look for different ones. If I want to change my search, so that's just one of my many searches I've saved, I go here and I go to save filter, and you can see that these are the ones I've done. I have one specifically looking for Mew and Mewtwo uh, for evolved uh, versions of different Pokemon, for cast form, for Chimchars, whatever. Whatever I want to set them to, I've set different ones. And you can have a bunch of them saved. Um, all 100%, which is similar to the one that's uh, pre-made, but I, I might get rid of ones I just don't care about. I, I don't want to see any Pikachus. I don't want to see any Wormballs, whatever. So I can make it all 100, but get rid of certain Pokemon. So if I chose that, you can see I can still customize it where I can be like, yeah, all 100 except I don't want that one or that one or that one or that one. And I can just uncheck everything I don't care about. Right, so it's not really all 100. It's all 100 I care about, as opposed to this, which is all 100. Right, uh, so I can make other ones here. Um, once I get it set the way I want to, like let's say I have one that's just looking for various types of whales. 
right? So what do I mean? Uh, Whalmer, Whale Lord, Lattice, or Kairogi. It's looking for any of those only. Um, and I just basically, I, I, I selected those. I hit save filter. I hit save up here, gave it the name whale, hit save. And from that point on, when I choose that custom one, custom means look for whales. It pretty much only ever finds whalemers. But every once in a while, I'll find a whale lord, right? Um, if there's an event going on, I might find a Kurogi or whatever, right? So, um, but that's kind of cool. You can set it looking for a very specific Pokemon or a range of Pokemon. Um, you can see some other stuff. Uh, like I said, you could set one up for just new stuff, stuff you don't have yet, right? So I could um, change it to like the all one here. And then I could um, do by Pokemon and I could just start selecting the ones I really am looking for. It sets them by generation, generation one, generation two, generation three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, of various Pokemon. So you might have to Google online if you're looking for a specific Pokemon and you can't seem to find it in any of the lists, what generation is that Pokemon and that'll help you find it based on that generation. Um, you know, that particular Pokemon. So you can set up a search that looks for only specific things you're looking for, which is kind of cool. You can further refine it um, by a certain gender. Uh, you can tell it to look for certain stats. Like ignore stats, this means I don't care what the stats are. But if you set that to not ignore um, stats, right now it was set on not ignore, but if I set it to ignore stats, then it's looking for anything. If I do not ignore, I can tell it what level am I caring about. I don't care, uh, you know, I only want level 20 and above or 30 and above, or I want only perfect level 35s and above, which there is no above. Um, or I could do it by stats. Like I only care about the attack stat or the defense or the stamina or I want certain ranges. I could do that instead or as well. Um, you can uh, do it by form for Pokemon that have different forms like um, these guys. There's some Pokemon that have different forms. So if you're only looking for specific forms of like the cast form, you only want the rain one or the snow one or whatever, you can search for that. Um, dare, various types of darelings, various types of um, flebebe, whatever the heck you pronounce that, or Cieros, um, or, or Ciro. Um, so if you can filter by any of that type of stuff, you're looking for very specific types. Um, so the, the custom filter is super powerful and you can use it for, like I said, you can set different ones. You can just only have it set to one at a time. So basically you go into settings, you find the save filter you want to apply right now. Like if I say I'm just looking for evolved level 35 100s or any level 35, I hit apply on that, go back, go back again, hit custom, and now it's searching based on that. I could then change it to one of the other saved filters and have it searched by that. So custom is whatever you have it set at at any given time. Okay, what else we got? All right, so we talked about feeds for the Pokemon, but at the bottom there's also this nice raid one here. And this lets you look for either one, three, four, five, or six raids. Uh, level six is, uh, isn't really level six. It's uh, your, uh, what you want to call it, the uh, Megas. So, you know, Mega Charizard, etc. I don't really like those. So usually I use, a, I'm looking for your level, level threes or level fives typically. Level one, if there's a particular Pokemon in there that you are looking for, for whatever reason. Um, but level five raids, this is all the level five raids and I can jump right to that raid so that I don't have to wait, waste passes or wait to be invited or anything, uh, which is pretty sweet. Um, there's also nests. So a nest is basically, for some reason, a particular Pokemon just keeps spawning in the same spot over and over again. Um, so, you know, if I go here, it'll jump me to a Bulbasaur or sore, um, nest that continuously I'll catch one and another one will appear there. And you get, that'll help you to really um, pick up a ton of candy and find good ones. Uh, you know, if I'm trying to get tons of Eevees, whatever. So that's what nests are. Uh, quests are things that are, you know, you're supposed to meet to do a certain things um, like if it says you know go to go against a certain amount of grunts uh, I can jump right to my grunts or a particular type of grunts um, or if I'm looking for 
uh, grunts that are going to give me uh, bugs as opposed to whatever or darkness or whatever type of Pokemon, certain types of Pokemon within that. I can jump right to them. So that's kind of handy as well. All right, what else we got? Um, Snipe it allows you to jump right to a certain set of coordinates. You can either get those coordinates by like Googling the location uh, within Google Maps. You can get to the location within Google Maps and I can show you how to get to uh, coordinates within Google Maps. So if I go into Google Maps and I search anywhere basically, let's say if I say uh, Washington Monument. Oh, let's just say Washington DC. Okay, so if I wanted to jump right here, there's the Capitol building, right? If I just click somewhere and then scroll down, don't click on an actual item. Like it, it just, it's sad that I went to click. Do anything except for an actual item. You can do near it. Just do something near it, and there's the coordinates. So I could just select it and hit copy. If you select an actual thing, it won't have the coordinates, but if you do like right next to it, I get those coordinates. And then when I go back into the game and do snipe, I basically delete the local coordinates, paste that in. There it is. So get rid of the parentheses because I don't think it likes them. And snipe. It tells me there's gonna be a 109 minute cooldown, but just like that, I have jumped to Washington, D.C., as you can see. Okay, that's telling me I have that 108-minute cooldown left. Um, so that's that's one. Way, that's how you can snipe or, or jump, if you like. Uh, I'm going to go back to using my favorites. I'm going to go back to my house. I'm going to go back to Santa Cruz, because that's where the game knows me to be. I don't have a cooldown there. Uh, let's look at some other options. Um, speed, I talked about. That, that's how fast you're going to walk. A uh, random route, I guess if you're super paranoid that it's, you know, not, um, you know, that it's seen that you're walking straight lines or something, uh, you could use that. Uh, so basically, you choose random route and give it a, um, a, a certain amount of ways to go where it's going to stop by a certain amount of focus stops before it stops. I don't really use that. Um, and hide UIs gets rid of the menus. Don't do that. If you do it, then like I say, you have to do like a long double um, finger press to get your menus back. I don't like using that. All right, so if we go back into our options here, we talked about those, talked about those. Journal, I think, just remembers all the different things you've done and where you've been. Um, enhanced throw. Supposedly, I think this is supposed to like change your quality of your throws. Like if you throw a good, it's going to become an excellent, or if you do it a great, it'll become an I haven't really noticed it really helps or does anything, but you're welcome to set it however you like it. Shiny, a shiny scanner. I turn it on, but I don't think it really does anything. Um, I think it might be what pops up and tells you one was found. Like it'll say a shiny whatever appeared. Um, so I do I keep it on, but uh, it... It doesn't really find them for you. It just lets you know that they were found. Um, freeze Pokemon. I'm, I'm not really sure what that does. I, I think it's when you're first trying to catch them, it keeps them from jumping around as much, but I haven't really noticed it do much. Stats inventory is kind of cool. If you clear, turn that on, um, it does similar to what Poke Genie does when you rename everything, but it does it automatically. So um, you tell it you have a choice of either, you can show the level four, um, level and then your attack defense stats um, or you can do level four and what moves it has um, I usually do if you're gonna do anything this top one's probably the nicer of the two and that just shows when you go into your Pokemon list instead of showing their names it shows you what level they are what percentage and what their attack stats are um, but you lose the name Right, so it's no longer called Eevee anymore. It's called level 27, 42, whatever. But it hasn't actually changed the names. It's just overlaying them on there. So if I go back in there and turn that off, you'll see all my names are what they were before. So I turn that back off. Get out of my list, come back into it. Everything's back to what they were a minute ago. Right, so they're back to the regular names. Now I use Poke Genie. And I actually changed the names, and, and that's done a little differently. 
Um, like this one, what you do is you, you basically, and there's a few different ways to do it, but the way I do it is you do a praise, you take a screenshot, and then with the Polka Genie keyboard, you rename it. And this is a permanent name change, not just an overlay. You select that, and that actually changed it to be, the name of that Pokemon is now 82% Whale Mint with the 9-14-14 as its stats. So I like that, it's more permanent, and I keep the name in there somewhat. Um, it's just a piece of the name, but it still gives me an idea what the heck it is. So when I'm scrolling through, I actually, some of these I've done it for, but for most of the ones I end up keeping, I've done that for. So you can kind of see my stats like that. Okay, on most of my Pokemon. So that's what the stats overlay is. So if you like that, you can use that. It's nice if you're not going to use the Poke Genie. I would use that. Uh, catch preview is definitely nice. So uh, you'll notice that when I've been catching stuff, it tells me right away whether how good my throw was. Like if I just do it like that, it tells me right away I got it. Gotcha. It'll tell me if I got a great throw, an excellent throw, or whatever throw right away. I don't have to wait for the ball to bounce around to find out if he's going to jump out. It tells me at the end, gotcha, but I knew gotcha right away because it told me. So that's what that preview is. Uh, what else? Um, nearby shortcut hide show. So that's this bar here. Um, if you like this bar vertical or horizontal, there's option for that as well. So right now it's on vertical. So if I go back to settings and I find that, um, right here, overlay direction, vertical or horizontal. So to the left is vertical, to the right is horizontal. So you noticed I had it vertical. If I do that, it'll now be horizontal instead. So if you like to more keep it down here, you might like horizontal better. I like vertical. I usually keep it off on the right, so I usually change it to overlay vertical. And that way I can keep it off on the side over here. Okay, you can always move them around. You can move this around as well, right? It just changes where it's located, but I usually keep it there. Just a little bit lower than where you need your escape and things like that, a little bit higher than everything else. So you can move them around as you need to. What else we got here? Um, enhanced throw, like I said, I haven't really noticed a scanner. Uh, it doesn't really do much. Catch. Uh, uh, this is, uh, if you have this turned to the right, when you click on something in that nearby bar, it'll jump to it. It'll teleport right to it. If you have it to the left, it'll only walk to it. So if it's far, it's gonna be a long walk. Um, but you know, sometimes when you teleport, you might have a slight cool down as opposed to walking, you're gonna walk there so it doesn't need a cool down, but um, teleport's usually nicer. Discord just brings up their Discord so you can talk to others and get help, etc. cetera. Um, tap to walk on, I told you that's how I move around instead of using the joystick. Spoofing on or off, if you turn it off, it's just like playing the game, um, the unhacked version where you, you, you know, you have to physically be where you're at. Um, Shortcuts, I don't, you know, these are different, you know, shortcuts within the map um, that's going to show what's going to show on your shortcut bar. So if you're like, uh, I don't really use some of these, you can get rid of them. So you can go settings, go to shortcuts, right? And you'd be like, well, which ones do I care about? Um, I want my favorites. I don't use clear items because that's a VIP one, so I might as well turn that off. Feed, map, I use feeds, I use snipe. I, I, I use from time to time speed, I use random route, I don't use, so I don't need to show that anymore. I don't use the journal. I hate the hide UI, so I want to turn that off. Block non-shinies, I think that's a VIP feature, so if you turn that on, it's not gonna work unless uh, you do that. Release on catch is also a VIP feature, so that just means that as you catch them, it just drops, you know, it sells them to the professor immediately. Uh, that's dangerous because if you do that to something you really want to keep by mistake, you've just lost it. So, uh, but it, it's handy if you're just trying to, you know, level up quickly and you don't care about any Pokemon you're catching. 
Uh, you just got to remember that it's going to automatically sell them to the professor as soon as you're uh, done. But I think it's a VIP. Both of those, I think, won't work unless you pay for the VIP subscription. Um, let's see. Uh, we already talked about the joystick dynamic. Joystick point north is just another piece of the joystick. The dark mode changes your dark color of this menu. Dark mode for the map changes the color of the map. Uh, cool down warnings. I don't know why you'd want to turn that off. Same thing with the timer. If you don't have those, it's going to let you ban yourself constantly. So I wouldn't turn those off if I was you. That's pretty much all of the main features of the of, of iPogo. It's really useful, very handy. Um, if you don't know already, you should, uh, after you get the game set up the way you want it, you should go to settings and you should go to import export and you should click at the beginning of it and then do select all, do a copy, open up an email, right? And draft a new email, paste that in there and email it to yourself, right? Because the last thing you wanna do is have to set that up again. So if you reinstall the game and you lose your settings, um, you won't have to retype them again. So I just type this iPogo settings, right? And then you can put the date on there if you want or whatever, send it to yourself and hit send. And that way, if and when you need to re-import those settings, you would just go to that email that you sent yourself and paste them back in here and hit import. And that way it'll remember your settings uh, and reset everything back to the way it was. Uh, right now. Anytime you change a setting, add a new favorite, whatever, do the same thing again. Uh, that way you have the latest version of your settings, not some older version. Uh, that's important. Uh, as I mentioned in my install video though, um, if you overwrite the, the game as opposed to deleting it uh, and then reinstalling it from scratch, you won't lose your settings. If however, when you go to click on it weekly and it says it's no longer available, if you delete the game, and then install it again from um, the normal method, um, it will come in with no settings. It'll go back to the defaults. So you'll have lost your settings and you're gonna really hope you have saved them. Um, so definitely save your settings just as a safety, but if you leave the game on there, usually when you reinstall, you don't lose your settings. They're already there, which is beautiful. So I recommend never deleting it, just overwrite it with the, uh, the computer to, to push it back to your phone. Um, and you'll save your settings. But uh, as a safety measure, I would definitely uh, export your settings out by copy pasting them into an email to yourself uh, fairly frequently. Uh, that's about it. If anybody uh, has any questions on how to use uh, iPogo, um, how to jump with it, how to do whatever with it, just let me know. I'll try to answer it in the comments. Uh, if you need me to make another video about something a little more detailed, I can do that uh, depending what it is. So. Um, that's it. iPogo, super easy. Uh, lots of fun. I, I think it gives a whole new level of the game. Uh, I was getting really bored with Pokemon Go. I, I, you know, I never was able to go to any of the events and things like that. Uh, you know, I don't have time to schedule my life around Pokemon, so instead I let Pokemon schedule itself around me. I can jump to where things are. If there's an event going on in Tokyo, I just jump to Tokyo. Um, if there's... Um, something uh you know where, where you have to you know community days only between noon and five well i'll jump to somewhere in the world where it's noon and five uh, you know at my time not when uh neantec says so so um is it cheating uh, absolutely it's totally cheating if that offends you don't do it um everybody should play the game the way they want to play the game and uh i'm not getting paid any money to compete with anybody so i don't feel bad uh, I'm not trying. I'm not even doing this competitively. I play it for fun. So um, those that get offended with spoofing, thinking it's this horrible thing, you're cheating. That's your business. Uh, I'm not trying to compete with you. I'm just doing my own thing. So uh, enjoy the game. Have fun. Comment if you like the video. Please uh, hit the like button. And if you like my videos, go ahead and subscribe. I do some other stuff. I have some other things I've done, how-to videos and things like that, uh, that you're welcome to check out as well. All right, take it easy. Bye.